that I'm Diane Mendez, and I'm your host for this series. And um, I am doing these events in honor of my late husband, uh, with whom I used to do tremendous events all the time. And some of the, uh, a lot of them were fundraisers and so forth, but this is just, you know, something that I do in his honor because he loved things like this. Now, on to the, uh, the star of the day. I first met Hannah when she lived nearby on Broom Street and performed as a jazz chanteuse at various venues around the neighborhood. She has returned to her roots as a visual artist from um, a sort of 10-year sojourn in the performing arts. Um, without further ado, please join me in welcoming today's guest of honor, Hannah Moon. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Soho Strutt and the Belsky Foundation for this opportunity. Um, my name is Hannah Moon. Um, I guess I'll just sort of give you a background of who I am, where I'm from. And in the process, I'll share with you some of my past works as well, because I think that'll sort of give you a better understanding of my current work. Um, <clears throat> I was born in Busan, South Korea. <clears throat> and uh, let's see, I came over to the States when I was two and a half. Um, I'm sorry, when I was five, I came over to the States. When I was two and a half, my parents uh, moved to the States first. So I was left with my mom's mother and my mom's father in Korea, where I stayed in sort of like a countryside setting and played with tadpoles and stuff like that. Um, my, both of my parents are artistic people. Uh, my father was an art teacher in Korea, and his work is phenomenal. He still paints and draws, and he has so much work. So obviously, he was my first inspiration ever. I grew up with paintings, the smell of oil paint and sculpture, ever since I was Ben's age. My mom uh, ended up being a nurse in Korea, but she is probably a better drawer than my father. <laughs> She's a closet artist, um, exceptional. She can draw anything realistically. She's very much of a realist, but she once drew a picture of, of me as a baby, and I couldn't tell if it was a photograph or not, so she's, she's like that. But uh, now she does quilting for fun, and she's designed some incredible quilts. So now they're here in the States. Um, so in 79, I immigrated to Philadelphia to join my parents, where they set up shop, um, you know, the typical immigrant life. <clears throat> they opened a Korean deli. I'm sure you've heard of that before. <laughs> and I, we lived right above the store, which was a blessing and a curse. A blessing because, you know, we were always there for the business. It was a curse for me because uh, my parents, whenever they needed my help, there was a buzzer underneath the cashier <laughs> register that they would push. And I would be upstairs watching my favorite show or whatever, and this bell that would sounded like a fire alarm, fire ha firehouse alarm, which like shook the house, rang like, you know, it's 10 times a day. So I was always on call to, to help out. Um, so that's sort of like the splice of my, that aspect of my childhood. Um, my father, even though he was an art teacher in Korea, he continued to paint uh, when he came to the States. So we had this fish and fruit store, but his artwork pretty much looked like this in our fruit store. So all of his impressionistic paintings, landscape, it was right above the apples, oranges, cantaloupe, and watermelon, and fish, like everywhere. So that was our store. Um, my mom was a heavy classical uh, aficionado, as you can, you can call her that. She, was, uh, she made me play the piano, so I, I played the classical piano for 10 years. Uh, wasn't really my thing, because I had this, I just couldn't put myself in a room for 10 hours in practice a day. It wasn't my thing. Um, and I became like a perfectionist, and it made, it made that perfectionist side of me like come out and turn into a monster because I couldn't get that note right or whatever. It just so I didn't go that direction. My brother, however, <clears throat> he's a, a violist for the Philadelphia Orchestra, mm -hmm. so he went through that direction. So we had we're lucky. We're very lucky to have had um, artistic parents and supportive parents in that way. Um, I drew a lot in high school. My favorite subjects were 
art, obviously, and I really loved the sciences and math. Um, and I guess my first painting ever was in uh, high school. I did a picture of my cousin, it was a face, a uh, portrait of her on the beach, and it happened to win uh, to my shock. It won a first prize in something, I don't know, at the East Coast, some kind of competition. So that was like, oh, wow, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Um, faces, it's, it's funny because my mom, she told me that when I was two or three, I used to draw faces on the floor, like with a crayon or something, and then my mom would say, Hana, you know, don't draw on the floor, because you know, that's not where you're supposed to draw, okay? And I would say, okay. And then the next morning, my mom, who, you know, she was a fanatic about cleaning floors, Koreans are very obsessed with clean floors. She would find in the very corner of, of a room like a tiny little face that I had snuck in because I, I just couldn't get away with not drawing a face. So I guess I liked faces and I still love to draw people. I was known in high school, I guess, I, you know, the yearbooks. I was most well known for art and music and the most likely to fall asleep in class <laughs> uh, because you know, my mom had to take me, she was very religious and she wanted me to go to a Christian school, which was really far away. And we lived in uh, Northeast Philly, so I had to wake up at 5, 5.30 every morning to commute to school. So um, <laughs> that was that. I got accepted early decision into Carnegie Mellon University and not knowing really what I wanted to do, but I just, you know, wanted to go to college to do something, obviously. I, if I had the wisdom which I didn't back then, I would have gone into painting because I'm standing here now and I, this feels right to me. But at that time, I didn't know that. Uh, my father was a great role model in terms of painting all the time, like the discipline of it and the, showing me how he loved doing it. But because he was so struggling as an immigrant in the store, it wasn't necessarily um, the model of success, I guess. I didn't see it in my head. You could be an, an artist and support yourself. It was the opposite. I, the impression I had was, you really couldn't do this as, mm -hmm. as a living. So I ended up majoring in industrial design. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which was sort of like my um, uh, cop out, I guess, because I, I couldn't do painting. Industrial des design is product design, like, you know designing vacuum cleaners or whatever. Um, I did that and then I realized I didn't love that. I took a, an acting class offhand at Carnegie Mellon and I fell in love with acting. Now my only acting uh, experience before that was playing Cinderella in fourth grade, which is a big deal by the way because I was the only Asian girl in school <laughs> and my English was still broken. But I rocked Cinderella, okay? I was really good Cinderella. So with that little bit of acting experience, um, I took this acting class in college and fell in love, decided that's what I want to do. <laughs> Not painting that. So I went to acting school, I applied for, um, I had a BFA already, so I applied for a master's degree in acting. I was accepted into the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. Um, with very little experience, but uh, I was grateful to have been accepted, and I got trained, and I came to New York in 2000. Um, and then I joined the acting world here, which is the best acting world besides LA, uh, certainly for theater especially, so I did that for 10 years. Um, I would say I had, have had some success, but you know what? Um, I, the urge to draw was still inside of me. I guess once that seed is there, you can't really walk away from it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you. It's during my acting, uh, acting years. Uh, this. I had moments and times where I was like, you know, I really feel like drawing right now. So this was uh, a portrait, faces again. Um, let's see here. I did this at the Art Students League meeting. Yeah, Nadine is a fellow artist. Um, okay, a model. This, this is another model from the Art Students League. This is really important for me. It's a pivotal drawing because you see these little marks here. Uh, this is where I first understood the idea of value. Value is 
When you see color, pretend you see it in black and white scale. So if you turn this into a black and white, like in a computer or something, you can really understand where are the lightest lights and the darkest darks and all the different shades. But the trick is, I guess, when you're working with color, is how can, can, you, can you see that with color? So I took some, col some uh, cr um, colors and I just put them in a, uh, the order of grayscale, like the light to dark, and then I just went to town with it. I just, you know, just tried to not care about color and just only pay attention to the lights and darks. And um, this, that's why this was a pretty important piece for me, because before that, I was only interested in making everything exactly like my mom. My mom was a realist, making exactly things exactly the right color. Let's see, and these are just some some other figure drawing. Uh, with a limited palette, okay? I'm just gonna put this right here. Is that okay, Dan? Sure. It's just easier and faster. Okay. And then I want to do a series of, this is in my apartment, I think one night, and I just wanted to, I just wanted to draw, and I didn't have anyone to draw, so I drew myself. <laughs> and I made funny faces, and touching my boob, and, you know, I'm naked. <laughs> that's, I swear to God, I, would, I never thought I would be showing this in, in a setting like this. So that's why I'm naked, but I thought, oh well. <laughs> you know, there you go. I did a series of these, and I didn't care if I looked ugly or fat. Like, it's just, that's not, I guess partly when you're drawing yourself, it's loaded because there's a lot going on. You see yourself, and you see what you think you are, and, and I, I was definitely in a mode of searching for myself as well. So I think that's partly why I was drawing myself a lot. Okay. And by the way, this drawing back here is my husband's painting. Who was sitting right there, Josh, who was also an artist. Oh, thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah, oh, that's so much better. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And uh, those sketchbooks over there have a lot of drawings of Josh, but um, this is one picture of Josh. He's holding up a, a newborn baby book because we were expecting Benjamin. So I did a quick drawing. I really love quick drawings. I'm kind of inspired by the Chinese calligraphy art, just like this idea of capturing the essence of the line in the moment and just it is that is what it is. You know, you're not tampering with it. It's the moment and that's all there is. So these lines, I don't go over them. I don't belabor them. I just, it's a snapshot, and it's probably done in, I don't know, just really quick. And then after drawing for a while, I was like, I want to paint again. So I just did a, this is just one of the a figure uh, paintings. This is oil paint. I never, first, my first oil painting, because I never really understood how to use oil paint. So, um, as versus, versus acrylic, you know, so uh, that was interesting to me. Yeah. So after I was uh, acting, while I was acting, I also sang as a jazz vocalist, which I really enjoyed. And I have a friend, Maggie, who is a jazz vocalist here in the audience in the back. Hello. When I was doing my gigs in Soho uh, singing, I had a drummer named Frank Levitano, who goes by the name Frankie Sticks. I wanted to paint him. <laughs> so this is Frankie Sticks. Still along the lines of like realistic, but you know what? Like that picture I showed you, like I'm using different colors to describe light. Uh, I did this pet piece. I think it really stems from the fact that I was so freaking frustrated with classical music. I just wanted to rip it up. <laughs> that was my initial. <laughs> that was my initial feeling. Like I want to use this. I can't play this music well enough but why don't I just use it for art? And so I'm using it um, to kind of tell a story and like I'm manipulating it. And I don't know, it was, it's like these pieces like are connected together and I don't know, this was my very, one of my very first abstract pieces. So I was kind of, kind of afraid to do this because jumping from uh, representational to abstract is, I'll talk about that right now. So, when you jump from realistic to uh, abstract, 
for me, it was like, okay, how do I do this? How do I even begin to draw something that's not in front of me? Because I've never done that before. It's frightening. You feel like you don't know what you're doing. All of these thoughts of uh, just, what are you crazy? Like, you know, just stick to what you know. But uh, so here, I just tried using the lines. Since I was so into lines, I just said, OK, I'll give this a whirl. And I just used line to express something. Here as well. And then, I, and, then, and then I used type. Robin, if you can help me. I just used type. I started using type. I mean, you know, words. It says doesn't matter because I was having like a connection like, I can't do this. It doesn't matter. Just do it. And so I just kind of, <laughs> and here this is, it says fuck your ego. Because I, when I was trying to do something that was unknown to me, my ego started to speak louder and louder like, like come on, who do you think you are? Like, I can't do this. <laughs> and uh, this is just uh, another abstract. It's, this is called When I Look at Ben. It's just a simple shape that it represents how I feel. So that was a new thing for me because painting has always been for me drawing what's in front of you, making it look as realistic as possible, and that is a successful drawing, as opposed to how do you draw how you feel? How do you put that on the paper? So, you know, I just went kind of crazy. Just these are doodles. So I just want to share with you some of that. And this is like one of my first uh, abstract finished paintings. This is called Glam Shot. It really doesn't, I honestly, this is all about experimentation. I don't really have an idea that's behind it. I just wanted to just have fun with abstract. OK, so back to my life. Ben was born. Ben was born, and I proceeded to draw him. This is, uh, uh, I don't know if that looks like he's sleeping on my shoulder, but that's, it's from a photograph. And again, I'm using values, values. So you can see the ABC. It's really, really fun, actually, to try to get that light gray, just the right hue, so it's not glaring, but it's just quiet enough to be in the background and yet not, not take the focus of this. So it's really fun to play around with that. And you wouldn't believe, like the tiniest bit of paint that you add to the white changes the value like crazy. And then here, if you, this is one, two, three. That's very, very light. <clears throat> I went back to my portrait mode again. <laughs> this was done really quickly. It's an ink. You know. And then, um, this is a collaboration. Ben, remember this? You drew this. It's a horsey. You made it. That's right. So uh, I started doing metal work. I don't know. It just felt there's something really tactile about it. Like I said, I studied in industrial design. so. I really like tactile things. I'm attracted to it. And I love the composition, the, the difference this feels with this. And I guess if, 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 if this was about anything, I guess it's like the contrast of me as an adult versus a child. So while, <clears throat> so around the same time Ben was born, I started, and, and, and around the same time I started doing abstract work, I started to meditate for the first time, no, second time in my life. It sort of happened at the same time. And um, it's, it's changed me profoundly. Uh, I think the main thing that I've really gained from it is that I, am, I was able to really see my thoughts actually like be an observer of my thoughts for the first time in my life. Um, and how, how many of you have meditated in here? Am I speaking? I just want to see. OK, OK. Um, yeah, so when I first tried, I could not meditate. And I was like, this is not my thing. I'm just not a meditator. But I just uh, had, a, I had a sort of a, a calling to do or, or sort of attraction towards it. Um, so it's really interesting when you watch your thoughts and 
you're able to separate those from, I guess, what's who you really are. Uh, I just thought that was really beneficial, and it, it taught me about self-love, taught me about um, uh, actually trusting in this sort of higher power uh, that that could be trusted. So it's it's been a really uh, a great thing for me, and it's been now like the subject of my current paintings. <clears throat> this is called Permission. It's acrylic, and I'm still sticking with my metal pieces here. I think the metal pieces for me sort of represent the physical reality that we live in. And the paint, you could say, represents sort of the spiritual world, the spiritual reality that we all have inside. And permission is, for me, it's about giving yourself permission to look at your shit, mm -hmm. it's in essence. Like, sometimes it's so hard to do that, you really have to kind of, at least I have, I have to, you can go on, I can go on a long time and not, not look at my stuff, but uh, it's about that anyway. The term egress means uh, the action of going out or leaving a place. So this is about an action of leaving a place. And uh, for me, this is what it feels like when I sit there and I'm just quiet and I'm really just, I'm tuning out everything, all the chatter and all the expectations and you know all that stuff. These little pieces, I don't know. I, I feel like they're they're kind of to me like sort of the materialistic, I guess, world, and leaving that to a different different space spiritually. <clears throat> I, I titled this, this series "Abundance Over Scarcity" because one of my meditation sessions, I realized, wow, I really have a lot of issues with scarcity. This feeling that I don't have enough of this. I don't think that I'm enough of that. And I'm coming from a place of lack. So I was thinking about, well, what if I turn that around? And what if I just trusted that there is much, much, much more than coming from that place? So what, if, what, what would it feel like if, you, if I had a sense of abundance while I, during those hard times, because I think that's when it matters. When it, when you're going through those tough times, is when I need the, I'm, I so desperately need to feel like someone has got my back. <laughs> so this is uh, called rising. It's it's that spirit I feel like that's kind of coming up, and um, the abundance is is coming up from the scarcity. That's the only way I know how to explain. It's really hard to talk about these things. Uh, <laughs> counting pennies. When I was working my parents' store, uh, I had to count the pennies every night. Um, you know, just when you're counting pennies, and, I, and actually I start to count pennies, I still count pennies sometimes. Um, financial abundance and scarcity, you know, worries about money and things like that. This is what this painting's about. But having a sense of abundance. It's not a negative painting. It's it's about, okay, it's going to be fine, you know. This is toggle. I use the word toggle because I think of a computer, you know, when you toggle back and forth. That's how easy it is to toggle back and forth between the sense of feeling abundant and feeling the lack. You know, it, it's such a fra fragile back and forth, I feel. Um, this, is, this is abundance of being. That's the title of that. Um, I guess I intentionally leave a lot of space to rest. Um, and I just work intuitively until it's really communicating how I feel. Um, I love to scratch. Um, I put my screws in there. And um, the choice of color is important to me. Blue, for me, it feels like a sense of trueness. Um, this idea that for me, like I just want to be okay with me, and I don't have to please anybody. That type of notion, and I guess that's that kind of wraps it up for me at this point. So, thank you so much. Besides your parents as artists.